Hello everyone, and welcome back to a new episode of Shenzhen I.O. Let's get started on the next puzzle. Would you believe it? Joe has an idea. Last night, I met a designer for a major international athletic wear company. She was in Shenzhen to tour some factories. We had a really good chat, and we went and got a couple drinks together, and well, you know how it goes. One thing led to another, and to turn a long story short, soon enough we had a product idea! Yes, what a bait and switch there, Joe. Specifically, automatic color-changing running shoes. Sounds like the vape pens. Everyone loves brightly colored shoes, but matching them to outfits can be a pain. Shoes made from e-textiles could adjust to the rest of your outfit automatically. Their design team sent over some colored data tables to get us started. Okay. Two pages of instructions. Button. Is a, oh, I can't even see any of the inputs or outputs. Button is a simple input connected to a button. Sensor is a simple input connected to a color sensor. Ink K and ink N are simple outputs connected to pieces of fabric coated with color-changing electrochemical dye. While the button is held, Values from the color sensor should be red and bucketed according to the color classification chart, which I assume is in the uh, supplemental data spec. When the button is released, ink K and ink N should be set to the values corresponding to the color that most frequently occurred during the calibration period, as indicated by the smart dye color space. There will never be a tie. This is like the first time they've ever made a guarantee to us. <laughs> Prior to calibration, ink K and ink N should each be initialized to 50, corresponding to a neutral color. Look in the supplemental data section of the manual to find the wavelength based color classification chart and the ink smart dye color space. <laughs> a lot, of, lot to do here. Uh, so the button, it looks like, is a simple line input that's only 0 or 100. And the other three uh, have actual numerical values. So we're going to guarantee need at least two microprocessors here. Because we can't use... Uh, yeah. Because there's three simple inputs that we need actual access to. All right, well, let's see what's up with these colors. Wavelength-based color classification and the smart dye color space. All right, so the idea is um, We're gonna get values. We're gonna we're gonna hmm. I guess we'll need a RAM to store counts for each of these six colors. And I suppose a ROM mapping wait six colors is there a neutral somewhere yes neutral is just 50 50. all right uh a rom mapping each of the color to a color space pair so while we're calibrating we will um now we could i'm not sure whether we also want one for neutral or not probably not i don't think that that's possible. I think we'll always get something meaningful in here. So we can just initialize to 50-50 and then leave it alone. Right? Does anyone ever push the button like twice? So when the button is pressed... Yeah, here, when they, they haven't calibrated at all, we want each of these at 50. But... Uh, when they have already calibrated and then attempt to recalibrate, we leave the values as they were. Okay. 
sure. How exactly do we test for six different ranges that a value could be in? It's not so easy. Could we do that in just an obvious linear way? It doesn't seem like it, because like, okay, let's say we test is the value less than 29, or less than 30, I guess. In which case, or I guess it would be less than 40. Is it less than 40? Yeah, if so, set it to red. Oh, I'm doing it upside down, that's why. I was thinking, is it less than 40? Set it to red. Is it less than 50? Said it's orange. But then we trample on the red that we've already done, right? That doesn't work. But I realized as I was saying it out loud that that's because I'm just doing it backward. I should check, is it less than 90? If so, set it to purple. And then, is it less than 80? If so, set it to cool dad. Uh, and then it's okay to trample because we just want the most recent hit. Now... thing is, just doing that eats up 12 lines, right? Uh, I'm not sure if we're ever getting values that are completely out of range. Like, do we ever get something that's less than 20 or more than 90? Looks like probably no. Nobody wears such ugly colors. Yeah, I think we can just assume that never happens. Uh, which saves us a bit, right? We we don't have to do the first test. We'll just move a uh, move purple in there to begin with. Um, but even so, that's ten lines. So it seems like. That needs to be like a sync. There needs to be a single controller dedicated to reading the color input and mapping it to the right color space. Um, it. I think it doesn't even really have. It doesn't have room to do like RAM manipulation in that same. Oh, hang on. Maybe... We don't actually need to do... Maybe we can do a loop. Rather than unrolling it ourselves and just hard coding it. Maybe what we can do is have it... Add another ROM chip. Which is the, the test... The list of six or whatever it is test values to, to use, right? Um, and just scan through each of those in a loop until we, uh, yeah, that seems promising. Um, the problem with that is that it uses up all four Xbus ports on a chip, right? Connecting to the data registers of uh, and, and the data registers and address registers of a ROM and a RAM chip uh, it takes up all four of our Xbus ports. And then, how do you talk to this chip and say, "Please get started"? Um, well, maybe 
you don't have to. Maybe it just checks the calibration input, and whenever it's high, it does that thing. Like at, at any rate, a cool chip to write, um, and it seems productive. But is it actually better than just doing it as an unrolled loop by hand? What have we really gained by turning it into a real loop with a RAM and a ROM chip? It seems like not much, because we won't have any ports left. Well, we'll have the simple I.O. ports. So we don't need any communication with this chip anymore, I guess is the main thing, right? That's cool. Let's try writing that. Uh, so it needs to, oh yeah, it needs to talk to all, both of these too, doesn't it? Wow. Okay, so this is like, in a way, our most central chip of all. Uh, let's put it like this. Put the ROM, oh, I didn't realize these things were quite so wide. Put the ROM here, because only this guy will ever need to read the ROM and the RAM here, because someone else will need to read the RAM to decide what to do with the uh, color values when the button goes low. Mm. And we're gonna need another ROM for the actual ink values for each color, but that's another another uh, kettle of fish, I suppose. Okay, so this guy's all set. Um, and the other chip that we need doesn't need to talk to the sensor, or the ROM, or this guy, but it does need to talk to the button and the RAM, and these two outputs. So we can't do that, can we? We can't have one single chip responsible for all of those things. Um, hmm. Just because there's not a simple I.O. ports, of course. Ah, but the button, we could use this to turn into an X bus if we wanted. So it might be possible to just use a this chip here. Um, boy, but just reading the right value out of the RAM, like finding the number in here with the highest value, that's like not easy. Um, is it? Uh, maybe it's not so bad. This is a tricky puzzle with a lot to do. Okay, so maybe, maybe. The thing to do before we get ahead of ourselves is to try writing this. Can we do it? Um, so the first thing is we're going to assume that the RAM is zeroed out the moment 
before we start reading our uh, our, our stuff, right? Um, the let's see, how exactly are we going to do this? Um, we'll, we'll, we'll arrange that by having someone else. The guy who's responsible for noticing when the button has gone low in order to output the ink will also zero out this RAM chip for us. Uh, that should be fine. Uh, but the address pointer for this might not be zero, so we're going to have to move that. Well, actually, we're going to have to do it every time, because every input cycle, we're going to read through all of these and then select a value in here to change at least once. Oh, yikes. Adding one to a value in RAM, that's not easy. That's hard. You have to like choose your index, store that somewhere, I suppose, in that. Oh, geez, no, we can't even. We can't do that every cycle because we need to add one. We can't just do a single test and then say, yep, write something to the RAM. We have to do a test and then write something, I guess, to DAT, which is the index in RAM we want to write to. And then, when we're done looping through the whole ROM, we tell the RAM what address we want to write read the value that was there, add one to it, and then tell the RAM again what address we want to write, and then we actually write the value. Yikes. Kind of a lot going on there. Well, let's give it a try, I guess. Um, we can probably avoid reinitializing the address pointer for our ROM if we're willing to just like read some zeros and do that, do something harmless in that case. Basically, treat zeros as as not doing anything interesting. Uh, which we can arrange if we use the test, if we if we write the tests like, is it less than x, and nothing will ever be less than zero, right? So those tests won't do anything. Okay. So I guess the thing to do... I was thinking for a moment we need a loop counter, but we don't. That's our address pointer in the ROM. Huh. It's gonna be a little bit tricky to read it out at the right time, isn't it? Let's try saying like let's test whether the button is a hundred or whether it's zero I suppose and if not we'll just jump to done and we'll define done as sleep one now how about the real work I think we do need to do that amount of work for what it's worth um, 
already I'm like, gosh, we're out of space. These, these chips are gnarly. Um, so I guess what we do is we start a loop here. Uh, loop. Test less than P1 and is it less than X0? So if so, then then Then, then we need to move, I guess, x1 into ack, if so. Uh, basically saying, yes, it passed the test, therefore our candidate for what value we're going to write is the data value, the, the, the address register value. And it's gonna be off by one here, like when we read the one labeled zero, uh, we're gonna put a one into ACK. And that's a little messy, but I think it's fine. We can just have, we have enough space in the RAM, it's not like we're wasting space here. Uh, and we'll just try to be careful to if we want an act or dat. I guess we'll, we'll find out. Probably in dat, actually, because we're going to need to do math on the value that we receive from here, and we can't avoid that math. Um, well, actually, yuck. Let's put it in ack. I'm thinking we're going to write uh, ACK onto the memory port here, the address register. Read into DAT. Write. Oh no. Can ACK. So I guess we'll put it in DAT. We'll move from DAT onto the address port. Copy into ACK. Move again the address port to say we're writing to the same place we just read. Then add one to increase the value in ACK and finally move from ACK into the RAM. It's a bit messy, but I think it works out. Which means we need the address in DAT. Now we need to test equal our address port, that's X1, or zero. And if it's not, we jump back to loop. Uh, I don't know if loop is exactly the right name for this, because we're going to loop again down here. No, we're not. But OK, at the end of all this, this loop, we've got a number, which is which test number passed, or what was the last passing test, I suppose. And then what we're going to do is move dat into x3, move x2, I believe, x2 into ack, move dat back into x3, add 1, move ack into x2. Um, I think maybe it's a little bit clearer if we write it like this. So I think this is our color classifier written out relatively well, relatively okay. Um,
Obviously, we have to copy the test values in here, but that's not a big deal. Uh, and we still are left with a bunch more code to write, really. Um, we need something that talks to these, well, the detects when button has gone low, reads all of these, Just one in here, huh? That's not too bad. But we need to do it only when button goes low. Uh, because we also need to zero out this RAM. Which means we can't afford to just redo that every cycle. We have to only do it when button goes low. Also, we need something to like initialize these to 50 to begin with. It's not clear exactly whose job that should be. Um, maybe just to like get a feeling of progress, let's test this um, by copying these numbers in. So we're doing the tests in less than order, which means we need to test for less than 90 first. Uh, and then less than 80, 70, 60, 50, 40. All right, so it's, it's just starting by 90, going down by 10, six times. That's easy. 90, 80, 70, 60, 50, uh, 40, 30. Do we have a 30 in here? We don't. Uh, there's the six tests we actually need to perform. So let's see how this goes. Uh, step, step, step. All right, the button is high. Therefore, what do we do? We say, yes, it is high. Or no, we say it's not. Wait, what? Am I reading the wrong P? this test backwards. If P1 is zero, we jump to that. Okay. Uh, try again. Now we say, is P1... No, not P1, P0. Boy, buggy software all, all over the place. Is P0 less than X0? Well, is 55 less than 90? Yes. Therefore, we'll sort of speculatively move a 1 into DAT, saying we, we think that the first test might be the one that, the, the best test. And we're just going to go back. And we're going to keep doing this for a while until. And meanwhile, ACK has been going. No, DAT has been going up. It's 3 now. The th Third test? Oh, we just haven't done. Okay. The fourth test has passed. Jump back to the loop. The fifth test doesn't pass. So we don't write five. And then we're going to spin through the rest of this doing useless junk until we get to the top. Uh, at which point we say, oh, never mind, time to stop reading. 
Um, and our winner was four. So we're gonna move, so my, my hope is that this value right here, the one the x is over, gets incremented by one. Move dat to x3. Okay, there we go. Move x2 into ac. It was zero, of course. Add one. Move back to x2. That happened too soon. I swapped the order of these lines. Uh, okay. So anyway, at the end of this time cycle, we put a 1 here. Great. Now what's the new color input? It's 53. So we should actually read the same value in, right? It should be test number 4 again. Yes. Now we decide to stop looping. We're going to increment the value at that same position and set it to 2. All right. So this, uh, this button guy has correctly uh, counted how many times each color arose. We got a 2 in this position, a 6 here, and a 3 here. That means that if we had some other module that could detect when the button goes low, it could scan this looking for the index with the largest number and output that somewhere. try and check like is this the value at the right index but those are all just sort of made up it doesn't, it doesn't matter. the job of this next guy is kind of tricky though like I'm not even sure what the right way is to check for button going low um, without using up another register to save what the old state of the button was. Actually, I remember reading a thing on Reddit about this. It was some clever trick involving like Testing the value to once and then sleeping and then testing it again when you wake up, basically, using time to gate it rather than a uh, register. Yeah, so let me just sketch out what I think I remember from this. So obviously, well, we're going to have a lot of chips in that. But right. let's say we have this, right? Uh, and it wants to be wants to be higher than that, I would think. Um, does it want to be here? No, but here is maybe okay. Actually, oops, undo. This is probably where we want to be. We can just route this under here and then connect those up. Okay. So the idea was. To test equal um, P0 against what? I don't remember the code at all, of course. I just remember the general idea, so I have to reconstruct the code. Uh, test whether P0 is low now. Yeah. So is it zero? And then ignore the result of that and just sleep for one. And then only if you did test it and find that it was zero, now test whether it's a um, hundred. And if both of those tests were true, Oh, whoops, we want to detect a falling edge, not a rising edge. 
Uh, so we want to do actually this. Now if both of those things were true, last time cycle it was 100, this time cycle it's 0, that means it must have just gone low. Um, and uh, I think what we need to basically do here is just say jump. Uh, done, basically, right? I'll just put the done up here. And now if we get to here, it means that we just detected a falling edge and we can do something interesting, hopefully. Um, Actually, like, hmm. is this using up any less code than doing it with a register? Like, mm, I don't know. It seems like the. I'm not sure what we've gained by doing this clever thing. how this guy is getting his output written anywhere good. I guess basically... We're gonna have to connect him up by Xbus to something. And... We're gonna have to output a color index. And that other thing will then look the color index up in an Xbus register. Not in an Xbus register, in a ROM chip. And output the corresponding uh, stuff to... Yeah. Uh... On the other hand, what if we could do it ourselves with P0? No, I don't think we really can. We could... We could use a muxer here, right? And um, read from P P0, re read from the button on an Xbus port instead of on a simple I/O port, and then we'd have both our simple I/O ports available, and we could write to this. But then we wouldn't have enough pins left to talk to our ROM chip. So, you know, not exactly gonna work, I don't think. We're running out of space here, I tell you. Um, I think basically, oops. This guy's gonna start by moving 0 to x2 or something, x3, I don't know. Um, this is where he's gonna output, here's what the color should be. Uh, and zero will just be in our color lookup chart as neutral. There'll be another chip who's responsible for reading this and two, has two Xbox ports connected to a ROM and two simple IOs connected here. He'll read the values out of the ROM to decide what to write. So I think that's manageable. Really the only thing left is for this guy. I mean, that, that other thing's job is super simple. But so this guy's trick is just to look up the right value in this RAM, I think. That's about it. Um, so he needs to keep track of two numbers, right? He has to keep track of uh, A, what is the... Um, index of the largest number, and B, what is the largest number? Because we have to compare them by how often the number, how large the number is, but we want as our result what the index was, right? And in a way, it's a little convenient that we never end up writing to index zero here, um, because that means we have zero free to mean uh, neutral. Sure. So why not? Not a big deal. We could have used some other number for neutral, but it's kind of nice, like aesthetically, that zero happens to be neutral. Um, Let's make sure we can get the wiring right before I go implementing it, I guess. Uh, this guy wants a ROM here. 
Ah. Scoot over like this, maybe? There's your ROM. We can't flip these, right? I, it's been so long, I forgot. Uh, we can't put a wire there. Ugh. It's a little bit tough to wire up, even. Jeez. Well, let's go back to the thing that seemed more obvious of putting this here. Um, the trick is just how to get this P0 out, right? Maybe it's just fine. I think it's actually just fine. We'll just connect up to X3 instead of X2, and then I think everything will be alright. Um, right, P0 will come out like this. Um, this will bridge over ah, to here. Like so. Uh, yeah. Seems a bit nasty. We're using a lot of memory here. Uh, okay. And this guy's job, I think, is like the simplest thing in the world, right? He's just basically sleeping on X3. Moving X3 into X1, moving X0 into ink K, which is P1, and then moving X0 into uh, P0. And that's it, right? That's his whole job. It's a shame to use such a gigantic chip for these four lines. Uh, but this is, he's going to read, wait until it's time to display a new color, read what the color should be, look up the color values for that color, and then just output them, and that's all he has to do. So that's easy. And now the last task left to do, aside from the data entry of all this crap, speaking of, yes, we have seven colors, which is exactly enough to fit on the ROM chip. Fine. Um... We now have to implement this guy's job of... He's already determined that it's time to go do his work of looking stuff up in here. Now he has to actually do it. So... Again, we'll employ the little trick that we did over here uh, of never needing to actually zero out the pointers. This, the pointer will start out zeroed and we'll leave it zeroed by just allowing ourselves to harmlessly read over a bunch of zeros and not care. Um, but we do need to zero out our accumulator. So uh, move zero into ACK, which is where we will store the value, not the index, of the largest number. Uh, Uh, it might be a little... <laughs> We're gonna have the same problem of we have to read the value and then once we have done we'll want to read, we might need to read the address it was at and if so we'll be off by one. Um, I think we just compensate for that by moving these color values around somewhere uh, but I think basically that um, we're probably actually going to move minus one over this Xbus port. That's minus one, i.e. here, is going to be our neutral value. I think. Boy, this episode feels long. I didn't set a timer, but I bet you it's been a while. Speaking of which, setting a timer. Is my phone, like, muted at all? No. Good thing nobody ever cares to talk to me, huh? Okay. Um, so let's let's do this loop and then worry about off by ones later. 
Uh, so we'll say loop is test greater than uh, x0 ac. So is the thing we're currently pointing at greater than the highest value we've ever seen? If so, move x1 into dat, recording the uh, index that it was at, plus 1. Um, so if nothing else, this guy could sub 1, but that's kind of pointless. We'll just, we'll just shift the color values around so that this math all works out right. Um, and also move... Oh! <laughs> Interesting. We have to be able to go back to read what value it was. Right? Like we checked, hey, is the value larger than the one we've ever seen? And we got the value of, yeah, it was. But now we don't know what value it was. That's gross. Um... It's really hard to go backwards in RAM. And I need both ac and dat, don't I? So it's not like I can just copy it somewhere else for a moment. Blech. Okay, well, the good news is it's not important which value I store in ac versus dat, right? So I can store the address in ac where it's at least convenient to do a little bit of math on it. Okay, so let's move 0 into dat and see if x0 is greater than dat. If so, I have to move x1, the address of the next thing, into ack sub 1 to get back the value that I just read in our address pointer. Oops, plus, please. And then move ack back to x1, move x0 into dat. Go back and read the value again, basically, right? Now we need to test equal is our address, which is in x1, equal to 0. If not, we need to continue looping, so we jump back to loop. But if it was... Oh, we are, we are real tight on space. But I think we did it. We move... Uh... Ack, which is the index of the color we read, and it's actually not shifted by 1, because we had to subtract it anyway, uh, over x plus to this guy. Um, x act x3. This is like super sketch, but it might be right? Like, just, I don't know, I typed a lot of stuff that seemed like it made sense at the time. Alright, um, let's just put some 50s in here. Let's go ahead and copy the color values. Um, we put neutral in 50, and now we have to do the colors from... We put 50, neutral at 0, which is all 50s. And then we have to do the colors starting from violet and moving down. Um, so if it was violet, we should output high purple 
which is 7585. After Violet is blue, which is Cool Dad, 1580. Uh, next up is Ballistic Viridian, which is 560. These colors are ridiculous. Chartreuse Abuse, 5 5. Deep Nacho. Uh, 50 and 5. And last of all, Dot Blood, 95.5. Okay. Uh, and I don't know if I have these uh, in the right order. Like, okay, so actually, let's check real quick. N is the second number in the list. So that's N, P0 needs to be second. Yeah, we got it right by luck. Okay, great. Huh, these two, these two guys are a little bit dubious. But okay, it looks like it's time to like run our first test, right? I don't know, does this even like, we do have a sleep in here, so I don't know. Uh, we're jumping to done here. I think that's right. So first step, very first thing is this guy is going to send a zero saying initialize to 50. And this guy is like decided that we're not in uh, calibration mode. So what he does isn't very interesting. But over here, he's sleeping now. Move x3 to x1. That's zero. It happened to already be there. Move x0 to p1 and x0 to p0, and great. We initialized to uh, a nice, safe, neutral color. And this guy has checked the button and determined that it was not high. So let's therefore go ahead and uh, this guy, yeah, this thing here, rather, is sleeping through all this because the button is not falling. All right, now it is. Testing whether P0 is 0. So we already know we got this stuff done because we tested that earlier. Is P0 0? Yeah, it is. Uh, which means that we don't jump to done because the button has just gone low. Correct. Great. We move 0 into dat, which is the highest value we have seen. Good. Oh no! Nobody ever zeroed this out! Oh, oh no. Um this guy could do it, I guess. We could make room. Okay, but we'll do that after we finish this test run. It it'll work fine for the first cycle, but then after that we'll be wrong. Uh however I think Oh no, he doesn't have any ports for you. Yikes! Um, <laughs> oh. he has one free. <sighs> we would have to figure out how to route it properly, but we could send, um, when this guy's done outputting a color value, he could send a notice over some Xbus port uh, to a small controller like this, whose job is to zero out this RAM. <sighs> I wish I didn't have to, but you know, them's the brakes, I guess. I'm gonna have to rejigger things quite a bit to just fit in that one more wire, I think. Because this is the only guy who's got the knowledge and the byte code space. To do it. Uh, this guy's got the space, but he has no idea when the button goes low. Hmm. On the other hand, he doesn't need to know that the button has gone low. He could just say, he has, he knows that the button is low, but he doesn't have a free Xbus port, so. Alright. Jeez. 
what a mess. Um, this guy has one free port and the knowledge of what needs to be done and the code space to send a message to someone else to do it. Um, which I guess is going to have to do, the wiring is going to be hard, but let's, let's cross that bridge when we get to it. First let's see if we correctly detected the color for the first phase. Uh, so we're moving a zero into dat, we're saying is x0 greater than dat? Well, no, there were no instances of the neutral color. Uh, is x1, wait, ah, we did read x0, yeah, so now x1 is our index, or our, our pointer. It was not zero, therefore we jump back and try again. We skip over a few zeros. Uh, finally, we get to this guy and say, is it greater than dat? Yeah, it is. Therefore, move x1, our address, into ac, subtract 1, move ac back in to that thing so we can read again. We read it into dat. Wait. Reading it into dat. Is that the thing we wanted to do? Yeah, it is. Okay. And now we're back at the next number, just as if that silly back by one had not happened. Um, and we say, yeah, we're still not done reading. Uh, so we're going to do the same num thing here to get the six out. And uh, then all of these others will not trigger. We'll get to the end of this loop. X1 is one. We don't jump to loop and we send ack, which is four, representing this six here over to here. He wakes up, moves a four into the address pointer there. Meanwhile, this guy's gone to sleep. And we copy out the values 15 and 80 and we write them. Are those right? Is that what we want? No, it wants five and five. Okay, maybe we have the numbers off somehow. At any rate, we decided on a color, so that's exciting. So why were the colors wrong? Is it because we have the tests in the wrong order here, or because of this stuff? Um, did we have an off by... Like, it wasn't off by one, it was off by a lot, right? 15 and 80, and it wanted five and five. That was off by two. Oh, we needed to double it. Uh, so we need to actually move x3 into ack. Add ack. And then move ack into x1. Uh, right, the problem is that the, um, each of these colors takes up two bytes, not one. So we need to skip over uh, twice as many as we're told. Uh, so if we test it now, I think we'll be correct. Oh my gosh, so much to skip over. If you guys like listening to this touchpad. Okay, we finally send that four which we put into ACK, double, move ACK over here, and we get a 5. Great, so we move the 5s out, and we pass the first uh, test. Okay, now we just need to rewire things to zero out the RAM every cycle. That's going to be a bit exciting. Ah, don't do that. All right. Uh... How even do we do this? Gosh, why aren't it hard, man? I wrote all the hard stuff. The software is hard, you know. Firmware, I guess. <sighs> 
this guy just had like one extra bite, it would be sort of easier, right? Because we could just use this X bus port, which is conveniently positioned to talk to some other chip. One standing over here, say. And then it could connect up to these guys relatively simply. Uh, but we don't. need the chip to be sitting like here, right? Basically. Uh, because it's gonna need access to two of these lines. And getting into these two looks real hard. This one is at least doable. Um, which means I need the wire to go around here and sort of under the bottom and connect up like this. make it connect to a left port? Does that, does that matter? What am I even thinking? I don't know. Yeah, I, uh, I can't have the, the, line, the wire connect to the same chip, right? scoot this chip up by one, would that help? It doesn't seem like a huge help, particularly because it'll make these two wires have to bend, which will make it harder to bridge over one of them. Uh, these wires would have to bend as well, but I don't think that's such a big deal. We could route this over the Top. No, because it can't go north here. It would have to go north here. At which point, it's already getting in the way of uh, this pin. So we can't really route around that. Ugh, I just want to, like, cut the episode and be like, we'll figure this shit out later. But hopefully what's left is pretty short, and so I don't want another episode that's like... Hey, it's just ten minutes of me trying to figure out how to write, how to move one fucking wire. Ugh! Uh, it would help if I knew how long this episode had already been, although I suspect the answer is too long. I just like, I don't know, I don't have the right, uh, the right patterns learned in my brain to figure out where I can make space for this here. It's just not a thing that I have experience with, I guess. Um, it seems like maybe I need to move this chip over to the right by one so that we don't have to run P0 through the X2 area. Seems promising. We've got some lateral space over here. So let's try that first. Um, it's gonna be a bit messy to rewire, I think, but okay. Scoot it over that over, connect them back up. Um, this P1 is still going to go like that. P0 can now go under, like so. just we're just like one we don't have quite enough space if we could just like get rid of this somehow we could put like a bridge here and a bridge here but there's no way to get wait 
maybe I don't need an extra wire. Do I? I probably do. I was imagining just for a moment there that we could use a single XBUS wire to communicate between this chip, this chip, and the third guy down here. But the problem is then, when we send a message from here up to this guy, the guy down here is going to receive it, I think. Or might receive it anyway. So that's not quite going to work. Um... Actually, maybe we can make it work. Because the Xbus chip that tries to read first is going to be the one who actually gets the value. And this new chip we're thinking of adding is going to have plenty of code space. So we could put a NOP in after the sleep X. Ah, yes. And then, when he tries to read from the Xbus port, there'll be nothing there for him, because this guy won't have sent it. And he'll start blocking, and eventually he'll get the message from this guy. So I think that's okay. So that means we don't need to free up an extra Xbus port here. We can reuse the same one. Okay, can I work with that? Does that help at all? X3 is the one we're using right now. I feel like now having moved to the right is actually getting in the way a little bit. Maybe it's fine. Actually, what it means is by moving to the right, I can do this now. Uh, wait, this is the same thing I just had, isn't it? Uh, I'm not sure exactly what it is I'm trying to fix anymore. Okay, so we do this. Now they're all connected up. Oh, what I wanted to do is scoot this guy over a bit. And he's got room to scoot over by one. So let's do that. Boy, these wires are real cramped. Uh, let's scoot this as well. And this. these. We've now made space for something to go on here. Uh, we can, in fact, even put this guy... <sighs> huh. Can't put him there because this is a simple I.O. pin. I was thinking I could just put him there and he would just, as long as he would never read from that port, it's okay for him to overlap with that wire but it's a, a wire type mismatch. Jeez. Okay. So put him like this, but then I can't get him to both of these wires, can I? Oh, I can. Like this, and this? Oh, this is the wrong kind of chip. All right, get out of here, buddy. Like this is looking pretty silly, but I think it works. Right? Okay, all right. Uh, so what exactly do we need to do here? 
this guy needs to now move, um, I don't know, 100 to x3. Uh, this guy's never gonna sleep on his x3, so that's fine. Oh. This move 0 to x3 is a little bit scary. Uh, so what we're just gonna do is have a sleep x on x2 to start off. And then a real sleep x on x2 each cycle thereafter. So, uh, this first send will go... Oh, you know what I just realized? We could have taken this out of this guy's instruction set and put it up here as, like, just initialize to 50s. And then we could have used this guy's port to do all of this nonsense that I just did. It would have been way easier. I think it still would be easier, honestly. So let's do that. Um, let's move 50 to P1 and move 50 to P0. Remove this junk. Uh, unbridge all this, connect that up, remove this, move ACK to X3, and move 100 to X2. Now this guy doesn't need this silly instruction, He and we won't need any silly knots. Okay, that's better. Uh, and all he needs to do is zero out the RAM, so that should be easy. Um, are either of these pointers guaranteed to be zero? Well, yeah. This this pointer, the one on the right, is guaranteed to be zero, but we can't get to those wires. It's just too hard. So we're going to start by initializing our address bus to zero. This guy doesn't sleep on X2 or anything. That would be super weird. Yeah, okay. Uh, so we will just... Um, Move 0 to x0, and loop. Move 0 to uh, x1, test equal x0 of 0, and if not, jump to loop, and that's it, right? Sleep, wait till we get our value. Oh, we're gonna need to throw it away. Move x2 to the null. Move 0. Ah, actually, let's just uh, move x2 to x0, get rid of this line, and send him a 0 instead of a 100. Uh, a number he can do something with. Move it into x0. Move 0 into x1. Yeah, this looks fine. Okay. Okay, so we did initialize the 50 correctly. That's not a big surprise. Now let's see what happens when this edge falls. This should be exciting. I'm going to have to step through all this again. And... Okay, we now move an ACK to X3. That's sending the correct color up to this guy. And we move... A 0 to x2, waking up this guy, to 0 out all the RAM. Right? And everyone else is sleeping. And now he's sleeping as well. And the RAM is initialized. Reinitialized. It's even initialized to 0 as it happens. Do we want to step through one more of these? I think we should be okay. Oh, right. The, the interesting stuff only happens when this goes low anyway. Yeah. I think we did it, guys. Go. Whew. That was a little more exciting than I bargained for. But, uh... A reasonably satisfying solution, I feel like. We had to do some pretty clever stuff to make everything work out. We did a few dumb things. <laughs> oh dear.
really. I guess because I didn't like I did I do some extra wasted reading of all the Rams or the the, the who knows. I guess my lines of code are way lower because I encoded all the tests into ROM, and so I have to do a lot more work to decide how to test them, and that's what all the power is, maybe? I don't know. Whew, that was a puzzle and a half. Let's admire that guy for a minute. Hmm. The wires, what a mess. I ended up using exactly one bridge. Is there any way I could have done without it? Probably. But I'm not really sure what it was. Hmm. Alright, well, whatever. Let's go uh, read our reward emails. This is actually pretty cool, Joe. Maybe even more kinds of clothing could be next after shoes. Personally, I'm thinking we could apply it to tracksuits next. It'd be sweet if I could have a different color for every day of the week. All right, and we got a Hey Sexy email from Masha9000. That seems like a legit email address. I do not suspect anything. I am Masha, freshly created in a factory not such a long time ago. Worked with many moves and techniques to make you feel the best. My material and construction are top quality. I can come to you in unmarked container and free shipping to the world. Click to see my pictures. I'm going to pass on that. Whew. All right. But uh, we are done with that puzzle. I hope the next two are about as hard, but not a lot harder. I would I would have a rough time if I had to do this twice again. But I don't want them to be like super easy either. Uh, and again, I don't know these are the last two. But the last two we can see for now. Okay? Uh, but uh, we're done with this one. So thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time.